all your friends are losers. And it can be a hard, hard process to detach yourself from those people, especially when you love and care for them. Most of us don't actually work that hard, and it's pretty obvious. Running a 10K is bloody hard, right? Your knees are hurting, your lungs are hurting, it feels like crap, and your ankles are sore. I mean, most people quit when they run. But I want you to imagine this. Picture yourself getting hunted by a lion in the jungle. And the only way that you can survive is being able to run a 10K. The reality is, you would probably find a way to do it. Somehow, some way, you would will yourself through that pain. The thing is, that is exactly what is happening with your life. Most of us don't actually work that hard, and it's pretty obvious. And I'm gonna explain why you need to overcome this lazy error and step into your new life. Let's go. Well, let's kick it off with the obvious. Society has become very, very soft. We now live in a fast food culture. Uber Eats, Just Eat, Deliveroo, Amazon Prime, Anything you want can come literally in the same day. That has bred a society of people that want the easy way out for everything we do. Even participation awards for sports. To me, that is crazy. And as someone who's been an athlete, if you ain't number one, you're a nobody. And that is how I like to live my life. And guess what? I feel like a nobody because I know I'm not number one yet. I'm not the best on YouTube. I'm not the best business coach. I'm not the best fitness coach. But I won't stop until I become the best at one of these things. But society has this thing where, oh, everyone needs to be involved. Everyone needs to feel okay. So a lot of us have lost that fire in our belly. And we accept mediocrity. We accept being fat. We accept being overweight. We accept low standards. If you subscribe to that mentality, that's a reason why you may quit and you don't have that fire in your stomach like you used to. And to add to that fast food culture that we have, everything in life has obviously got so much easier, which in some ways I'm thankful for, in some ways, I'm not. We don't actually have to do much hard things in life anymore. We don't hunt for food. We don't have to make our own fires. There's a lot of things that we just don't do. And that's fine because technology has allowed us to move forward, which is great. But having difficult things to do helps your body and your mind build resistance. That's why when people go to the gym and they train hard, they can build more muscle because your body is fighting against resistance and it adapts, it recovers, and it comes back. So point number two is kind of linked to point number one but you actually need to give yourself something difficult to do every single week. You have to fortify your mind. I ain't trying to be no David Goggins, but I'm just letting you know, you need to give yourself a challenge. And this is what I do. I hate running. I've played football all my life. You can ask any of my teammates. I have failed at every single fitness test and running test that we have done. But guess what? Even though I haven't played football for years, I still run every single week. Not because I'm a great runner, but because I know that it's gonna fortify my mind and I'm gonna be stronger when it's over. You could do an ice bath. You could do a cold shower. You could do hot yoga. Something that makes you feel uncomfortable to the point where it's like, I don't wanna do this. You should do it at least once a week. Fortify your mind and it will help you refuse to become a quitter because society is full of quitters and people who do not chase their dreams for whatever reason. Number three is figuring out your purpose in life. If you stand for nothing, you will fall for anything. Most people quit because they don't actually know why they're doing so. You know, why do you want to lose weight? Is it to have a better sex life? Is it to look more attractive? Is it for the longevity of your life, for your children? A lot of people do things without having a really strong why. And your why needs to be so strong, like so strong, that no matter how much you get pushed back, you're going to fight through it. You're gonna exhaust every avenue to try and achieve that goal. When your why is strong enough, you will not quit or you'll be pushed to your absolute limit before even considering quitting. That's the problem I see most people have. They don't actually have a real purpose as to why they're doing things. And that's okay because sometimes society can beat the purpose out of you. You go through the school system, you go through this, you go through that, and you realize that actually, I don't know why I wanna do half of this stuff I wanted to do. So you have to have a real deep dive in your own personal life and your personal mind to try and see, okay, like why am I actually doing these things that I wanna do? Why did I pick this corporate job? Why did I pick that degree? And when you have that real deep understanding of why you're doing things, you're gonna be more successful. Point number four is comfortable surroundings. Something I see with men, especially after getting married, is they get way too comfortable. And this isn't just for men, but you may notice someone gets married how much weight do they put on? <laughs> they usually put on a good 15, 20 pounds. It might be the woman, it could be the man. You get this promotion at work and you finally hit that goal that you wanted to achieve. And then the ambition goes away. You start going to more work socials, drinking more, 
And all of this is just because you've got too comfortable with your surroundings. And for men, it can be very, very harmful because sometimes they get married, they lose their drive to chase excellence. And it's actually been shown that men who continue to chase excellence and actually cause their wife to have some competition anxiety, manage to have more fruitful marriages. Because your wife knows that you're staying in shape, you're staying your best, and she knows that she's got a dime. And when she knows that, and you know that, she's gonna love you more, you're gonna love her more, and things work out in the long term. Google competition anxiety and do the research. And with all this comfort in your life, you can get soft, not just mentally, but physically too. And that's why most men gain 15 pounds after marriage. And this is the harshest part about having surroundings that are way too comfortable is all your friends are losers. Hate to say it. If your friends are losers, <laughs> you're gonna be a loser. If your friends aren't chasing excellence, they're not hitting the gym, they're not pushing for more promotions at work, they're not starting their own businesses or trying to level up their lives, they're not pushing themselves and you're a part of that, then guess what? You're not gonna push yourself either and you're gonna suffer with the same comfort that they're suffering with. And all that's gonna lead to is bad relationships. Maybe it's drinking every week. It's gonna be a set of poor habits and poor standards that is gonna pull you down. You need a tribe that's gonna hell you up and push you to the next level. And it's not always easy as men to find tribes with people that we get along with and that we know, because we get used to the people that we've been around since childhood. And it can be a hard, hard process to detach yourself from those people, especially when you love and care for them. But if they're not elevating you and you're a quitter, you need to look at your surroundings. I know some of this is harsh, but these are the harsh truths of life. If it was easy for all of us, we'd all do it. Like I said at the start, imagine you were getting hunted by a lion. Even if you never ran a 10K, I promise you, you would find something in your heart to get through a 10K run if you knew your life depended on it. And when you start to attack life with that mentality, you are gonna be less likely to quit. And society is full of quitters. You don't need to be perfect and you don't have to be a one percenter. But if you can get 1% better than the average person, then you're gonna be above average. If you wanna know more about how I like to dominate my life through a better mentality, just watch this video right here. Peace.